everyone, welcome back to another dissection video. Today, I will be dissecting a crayfish. Crayfish live in freshwater habitats such as ponds, rivers, and lakes. Crayfish are arthropods. They're closely related to crabs and lobsters. An arthropod is an invertebrate animal that has an exoskeleton. The crayfish has a hard exoskeleton made of a material called chitin. The hard exoskeleton protects all the soft tissues inside the crayfish. Since the crayfish has no bones, it can't gradually grow like humans do. Instead, it must shed its hard exoskeleton and then grow. This process is called molting. Another feature of arthropods are the jointed appendages, which you can see over here. Crayfish have jointed legs. I can bend them back and forth. Another feature of arthropods are the body segments. A crayfish has a cephalothorax and an abdomen. Cephalo means head and thorax means thorax. Cephalothorax. Both the head and the thorax are fused together. Crayfish have four pairs of walking legs over here. You can see them. One, two, three, and four. They have two legs over here. Uh, one of mine is cut off. And these are modified legs. They are called chelipeds. Chelipeds have three uses. They are used to catch prey, they're used to defend themselves against predators, and are used to cut food. These four legs are called walking legs because obviously they're used to walk around. Underneath the walking legs are the swimmerettes. You can see these thin, feather-like structures over here. Featherettes have two uses. They are used to help swim. So swimmerettes help swim. And they are used to hold the eggs in a female. So then comes the question, how do you determine if a crayfish is male or female? That's all based on the swimmerettes. In a male crayfish, my crayfish is male, and I know this because of the first pair of swimmerettes. In the first pair of swimmerettes, it's long and hard. However, in females, the swimmerettes are thin and feathery. Did you know that crayfish walk forward, but they always swim backwards. They use their tail over here and they propel themselves backwards. A crayfish has a complete digestive tract. It has a mouth and an anus. A small hole at the end of the tail is the anus. Speaking of the tail, the tail is in the shape of a fan and this helps propel the crayfish backwards in the water. Why don't we take a closer look at the tail of the crayfish?
the middle part of the tail over here is called the talson. The ones on the side are called the uropods. Talson, uropods. And you can even get a better look at the anus. Now, why don't we take a look at the front? In the front, a crayfish has antenna. And these antenna help crayfish move when they can't see. Okay, now let's get a closer look at the mouth. So I have an enlarged version of the mouth region of the crayfish on my digital microscope. The first thing to notice is the structure maxillipeds, and these are right here. The job of the maxillipeds is to push the food into the mouth. And underneath the maxillipeds, you see two white spots. And these, so this is one and that's another. And these are the mandibles. So I'm just gonna move some skin out of the way. This is the mandibles of the crayfish. The job of the mandibles is to grind up the food. Okay. With that out of the way, I'm going to start the dissection. So to dissect the crayfish, you're going to need scissors. Oh, let me just move this out of the way. I'm going to take my scissors and I'm going to start posterior of the crayfish or the back. So make sure you make shallow cuts. And whenever cutting, always cut upwards. I'm gonna make sure. Okay, so I got the first side of the exoskeleton removed. Now I'm going to get rid of this area. Once again, I'm trying, by putting my probe on the edge, I'm trying to detach the muscles so I can easily pull off the exoskeleton. Okay, so the first structure we see here are the gills. And these are really easy to spot because they're light and feathery. Right over here. And the gills job is for gas exchange. It absorbs the oxygen and it removes carbon dioxide from the body of the crayfish. And you can see the gills on both sides of the crayfish, here and here. Okay, so now I'm going to be removing the gills.
Oh, and we still have part of the exoskeleton left over. Okay. And when you remove the gills, we're really lucky to be seeing this. Right underneath the gills is the heart. Right over here. I'm just going to put it under my probe. And why don't I put this on the digital microscope for a better view? Okay, so you can clearly see the heart on the microscope right over here. And you can also see that it has holes, one here and one here. And these holes are called the ostea. This is a characteristic of an open circulatory system. This means that the blood isn't contained in blood vessels. Instead, it flows over all the organs. And when it comes to the case of a crayfish, crayfish don't have blood. Instead, they have hemolymph. So the hemolymph exits the heart through the ostea and flows over all the organs and pumps back to the heart. And the process starts again. And on either side of the heart, you can see cream colored structures. Oh, I just ripped one, but one here. And um, there's another over here. Part of the exoskeleton is covering it. And this cream colored structure are the gonads. In the case of a female, it would be the ovary. But since my crayfish here is a male, it is the testes. Now I'm going to remove the exoskeleton from the abdomen. Just for a better view at the gonads. Okay. So here is the gonad. This cream colored structure. And right above the heart, you're going to see digestive glands. One, two, three, and four. Why don't I remove more of the exoskeleton near the head? Okay, so you can see the digestive glands clearly. One here, one here, one here, and one right there. And the job of the digestive glands is obviously to secrete enzymes to digest the food. Right above the digestive glands, you see this over here. And this is the stomach. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull the stomach out. And the really cool thing about a crayfish's stomach is that it has teeth in it. going to pull the stomach out okay okay so right now I only see one pair 
I'm not sure if you'll be able to see them because I think it's covered in um the food that the crayfish ate. Oh, wait, they're right. Yeah, okay. I think you'll be able to see them. Right over here, they kind of look like um seeds inside the crayfish's stomach, but these right here are a set of teeth. And there's another right there, yeah. So one set here and another pair here. They really just look like little seeds inside the stomach. So this over here are the teeth. And there's a pair right here too. It's a little darker though. Okay. So now that we're done with the stomach, I'm just gonna push these to the side. There's still parts of the stomach left. Okay, so something I hadn't mentioned earlier was about the gills. So you may be wondering, a hard exoskeleton is covering the gills. So how do the gills get access to the water? Well, the gills are connected to the walking legs of the crayfish. So while the legs move, the gills move too. And obviously this would work much better in an, a living crayfish. So when the gills move with the feet, water is able to go underneath the exoskeleton to the gills so that the gills could do their job. Now, let's try to look for the nerve cord. Okay, you can't see the nerve cord very clearly, but you can see it where it connects. So let's go over to the digital microscope. Okay, so right over here, it's a nerve bundle over here, and this would be the brain of the crayfish. You can actually see the nerve cord over here. It's a part of it. So this is the nerve cord over here, and where it connects right here would be the brain. So something interesting is, and I'm going to bring my crayfish back, The nerve cord actually splits into two. So why don't we go over here and go over the structures in the abdomen. So these over here are the muscles. And these muscles help move the tail so the crayfish could propel backwards. And in between, you see a line. This would be the intestine and that then connects to the anus. So, muscles, intestine, and anus. Now, underneath the muscles, I'm going to pull away the muscles. And I'm going to try to look for the nerve, nerve cord. Oh, I found it. Okay. So, it's a thin line. That's right in between the muscles here. Right over here. I put my probe under it. And this would be the nerve cord. The nerve cord actually splits into two, anterior 
and then it connects once again at the brain. So right here where my probe is, this is the nerve cord in between the muscles. The nerve cord divides in two and connects to form the brain. Let's go back to the brain now. When we come back to the brain, we see glands over here. Right here and over here. They're kind of shaped like leaves. And these would be called the antennal glands. The reason they are called antennal glands is because the glands are near the antenna. Therefore, they're named antennal glands. And antennal glands are basically kidneys. They remove metabolic waste and excess water. Okay, that is it for the crayfish dissection. I hope you enjoyed and I will see you all in the next video.